500 miles and crossed the Solent in the hope of unearthing some island rarities to take back to Connolly. Right then, team, we've got some extremely good calls lined up. A busy few days on the Isle of Wight, and the weather is good. Nice. So what are we looking for? What's, what's the Isle of Wight known for? It sort of doesn't have a pervading style. It's a bit of a mix of everything. You've got thatch cottages, you've got Georgian architecture, you've got high Victoriana, you've got very, very large towns. There's a French influence there. It's got it all, really. First up, they're heading to the coastal town of Ventnor. We're off to meet Jackie and Harvey, and uh, we are going to their shop in Ventnor, and then they've got st uh, other storage off-site as well. So we're going to see what's there, but it's a, a proper old-school antique shop. From a small fishing hamlet, Ventnor grew to become an exceptionally fashionable health and holiday resort in Victorian times. Once described as Mayfair by the sea, it's known for its mild climate and long hours of sunshine, and the novelist Charles Dickens once called it home. Just a stone's throw from the seaside sits a family-run business. Two shop fronts welcome its customers, one showcasing a classic collection of furniture through the ages, alongside work from local artists, and a neighbouring shop packed with garden and architectural salvage. They are run by the Burfields, Harvey and his mum, Jackie. Our main love has always been with antiques. We deal in 17th century oak furniture through to Georgia mahogany and later decorative pieces as well. We mix our antiques with contemporary fine art or by local artists on the Isle of Wight. We're really looking forward to Drew and T coming here today. I'm sure we're going to have a good day. Hello. Hello, Drew. How are you doing? Nice to see you. And you, and Hello, you. Tea. Hello. So, tell me, how long have you guys been here, then? Well, we've been in Ventnor for 15 years. Yeah. Um, but we've had an antique business on the island for nearly 40. 40 years? Yes, 40 wow. years next year, yeah. So, who, who originated it, then? Pete and I. My really? husband, Pete and I, yes. Yeah. Our main love is period oak and country furniture. Yeah. Um, but as you can see, we mix it with modern art. I'm all right with that. Yeah. It's a good mix. He's yeah. been signed by the Beatles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good mix, and it works, and it takes the edge off being a stuffy old antique shop. But what I like about it is, is they're showing how you can use your antiques around modern things. It's a good idea. It works. There's well, some nice things already. I like the look of that. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. I'm not sure it's got any great age to it, but it's no, certainly but it's a good-looking thing. And, yeah. Can we take the pot out? Yeah, of Come course, on. yeah. Is that real? Yes. Is it? If I look at a plant, it dies. I only so, uh, like real plants. Yeah, I'm terrible at it. The first thing I see, which I really, really like the look of, uh, is a cast iron latticework jardinier pot. It's probably 30 to 35 years old, maybe 40 years old, if that, right? Doesn't matter, looks great. As there is no name or maker's mark, the appeal of this lattice pot is purely decorative. But the oxidization to the ironwork has given it the unique appearance that Drew and his customers find attractive. It could be worth around £350. <sighs> oh, it's too expensive for me, I think. I can do a better price. Can you? Yeah, yeah, I can. What, it's 245 what can you do on it? 200 200 I think I can make 50 60 quid out of it, so... Yes. OK, Thank you very good. Much. I like good. that. It's just the yeah. colour's good, isn't it? Yeah, I know, the colour is good. The colour's yeah. fab, isn't it? It's sort yeah. of thing... But my mum would love that. She'd really like that. She's got Christmas sorted. Christmas and birthday, that is. <laughs> tell you for that much money. Uh, no. <laughs> I mean, there's literally nothing to do to it. You don't want to clean it. You don't do anything to it. You, know, you, don't, strip, you don't want to paint it or strip the paint off. It's a great look. That low boy's lovely. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Again, lovely colour, original brass, just a really nice, honest piece. Yeah. Look how dainty the handles on it yeah. are, aren't they? They really yeah. are. It always amazes me when this stuff survives. When you think, you know, that was 17, 10, 17, 20, somewhere around yes, there. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. how on earth has that survived? What else have we got here? I do love these things as well. Yeah. I do love them. Is that wooden again? They're so yes, beautifully ebony. carved, aren't they? Aren't they, for the money as well? Yeah. I mean, you can pick them up for peanuts. Yes, as well, I know, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's a, that's a particularly nice one. Yeah. How much can he be? You've got £80 on there. Up uh, 65. 65. I like the size of that one. I mean, mm. I know you it's get... It's a good the, example. It's yeah. got a good face, hasn't it? Yeah. It's got a good face. Yeah. Yeah, he's excellent. What do you reckon? Should we have him? Yeah, I like him. 
surprised you took so long to get to him. <laughs> yeah, on. we'll have him, please. There was a thing down here that I looked at, which is something you hardly ever see. Oh, the clock box. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> on the floor, there's something I recognise straight away, and it's a late 18th century oak clock box. And that's just the simple box that you would put your highly ornate, very expensive clock in. How many have survived? Hardly any. You know, they're one of those things that you very rarely see. I love the idea that that's all it was for. It's such a simple thing. During the late 18th century, clocks were still relatively new and very much a luxury item. So if you were travelling anywhere, you would take your highly ornate and expensive timepiece with you in a purpose-built box like this one, which is made from English oak with a simple design. A surprisingly scarce item to find, it could be worth around £250. Such an odd thing. You never come across them, do you, normally? No, because they were just looking binned. for one. Yeah. yeah. And it's got such, that's such a nice original handle on there as well. How much have you got on it? 110. I can do that at 85. Can you really? Yeah. That's a good discount. Can you? That's very good of you. Yeah, I'm going to have that. I hope that'll go to a clock collector. If you put that up on, the, up on the side with the door open with the clock in, it's a great look, isn't it? But also, that is utterly untouched. I mean, it's not been touched for hundreds of years since that was made in a shed by candlelight somewhere by somebody. It's never had anything done to it. That's a rarity. And it was 85 quid. That's an awful lot of history for not a lot of money. I've noticed there's an antique shop next door. That's right, yes. Who's yeah. that? So that's our son, Harvey. OK. So you'll find garden antiques. Bits cool. And bobs. We'll go and have a look at that. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. See OK, you. see you. Hello, Harvey. Hello, Drew. How are you? We've just met your mum. You have, yes. Nice to meet you. Hello, Harvey. Andrew, nice to meet hello, you. T. All right. right. You good? So this yeah. is your bit of the business, then, is it? Uh, yes, it is, yes. Garden and architectural stuff. That's right, yeah. My great love. Well, I'm actually a builder by trade, but obviously, being grown up within this sort of thing, it's just... You can't I've get been out drawn, of it. I've been drawn to it, you know. You can't get out so... of it. I particularly like the way you've decorated the walls. That's it's different, isn't it? That's a good idea. So the building has sort of led into you doing a bit of this as well, I think. Exactly, yes. Because, I mean, the current job we're on at the moment, I've supplied the flagstones and the reclaimed bricks, so it does all fit in. The staddle stones, I've seen... I've been driving around the island, I've seen quite a few. They're yes. mostly in that style. Yes. So that's an early 20th century base with a 17th century top. Yep. And then you've got that monster there. Yes. Did that top come with that one? It did, yes. Yeah. Is that... Because they're, they're all stylistically different from all of the different regions. So, mm -hmm. is that an island one or is that one off the island? Uh, these are both from the island. They're both are. They're both from the island, yeah. Okay. As an island community, it was essential that farmers in medieval times were able to protect their crops. Staddle stones were used to raise food and grain stores off the ground, as their mushroom like shape was almost impossible for rodents and other animals to climb. A piece of local farming history. Today, its value is as a decorative item. It could be worth around six hundred pounds. And how much? I know what I usually pay for them. What are you asking for that one? Yes. Three hundred on that one. Okay. Drew Pritchard has travelled to the Isle of Wight on a buying trip, and his first stop is at an antiques and architectural salvage dealer in Ventnor. I particularly like the way you've decorated the walls. That's a good it? idea. He spotted a staddle stone, typical of the type found on the island, and is trying to close a deal. And what are you asking for that one? Yes. 300 on that one. OK. What's the trade price, or is there one? Um, I can do you on that one today... 275? Yes. We'll have it. OK. Lovely. Yeah, we'll have that. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Harvey seems to think that that is an Isle of Wight design because all of these had um, different styles for the different areas, and that's just a, a really nice one. Can we go to see your, your other storage stuff? Of course we can. Can we do that? Yeah. Yep. There's like more to... lumpier stuff there. A few more stable stones as well also. Is there? There is, yes. There's a bigger one than that, believe it or not. Is there? Yes, it's wow. the biggest one we've ever seen. Right, well, I think we should go. We'll come yeah. back for that one. That's fine. Yeah? Lovely. Yeah, Lovely. thank you very much. Thank you. Harvey's family home is just eight miles away, 
and he uses its 10 acres of stunning scenery to showcase some of the larger and heavier items for sale. We've been to worse places. We have. This is remarkable. This, and this is your garden? Uh, not now, no, because I've moved out, but it used to be, yes. Wow, what a place. Yeah. It's fabulous, and you keep all the bits and bobs down here. We do indeed, yes. We've come down to Harvey's mum and dad's place, which is absolutely drop-dead beautiful. I mean, look at it. It's a floodplain, apparently, and then they've built their own lake in the middle of it. It's astonishingly beautiful, uh, as is a most of this island. Tell me about this. Where do you get this thing from? Have you, have you patched all this up? That's that has been professionally repaired, yes. That has come from <laughs> Kingston Manor on the Isle of Wight. Right. Who professionally repaired it, then, Harvey? Uh, a friend of mine. Called Harvey? Uh, no, it wasn't. No, no, work colleague, actually. Yeah. It's a little bit too much damage, isn't it? That is a it lovely is. thing. Oh, I think give it a couple more years, put yeah. the weather in, and, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it'll be ready, won't it? Yeah. How much is it? I, I was hoping you weren't going to pick up on the damage, but you have. The damage is so. all over it. It's like 90% <laughs> of it's damaged. Um, where are you at, Drew, on that, given the damage? No, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. We'll leave it. We'll leave Fair. it. Leave it. I'm just going to. I'm causing myself a problem. There is a, a large bird bath with had a central fountain. I think would have been bubbling water up maybe about this high, and it has had a very hard life. And then it's had a load of repair work to it, which is such a shame. I'd have rather have bought it without the repair work, to be honest with you. But that would have been a cracking buy. Very saleable, and I think in the right condition, aged up, repaired nicely. Three and a half thousand pounds very, very easily. But it isn't, it's not, and we're having to leave it. And now you've got some nice, them early staddles here. Yeah. So, what's your sort of prices? We should start, should you start banging out prices to me? That one can be 275 again, I think. Right. Where'd you get that one from? Um, I don't know where that one's come from, actually. That one's been here a very long time. Is that paint? Where? On the base? Yeah. I don't think so, no. Oh I'll have that one. Okay, fine. 225 is that one, wasn't it? Yeah. 275. 275. T just took 50 quid off you there. He did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the Staddlestone that really has taken my eye is one and it's white. It almost looks as if somebody's painted it all over, but it isn't. That is the colour of the stone. And I have never seen one of those before. So that makes it unusual, it makes it rare, it makes it valuable. We possibly have the only white. Staddlestone in the world. Who knows? But I've never seen one before. It gave me a little tingle, that one. Burfield Antiques in Ventnor has been a really wonderful day, to be perfectly honest with you. Lovely people, great buys. Then we get to come here. Some days in the antiques business are really, really good days, and today is one of them. I've just really enjoyed myself. It's been a fantastic day. Lovely to meet Drew and T, of course. All in all, very good. After a successful day's buying, Drew and T are treating themselves to a little R&R &R on the island. Aha, there you go, proper beer for you. So, Ventnor. Ventnor, fantastic. That was really good. I enjoyed today. Bought some cool things. A white staddle stone. It's so unusual. So unusual. It's like an albino staddle have you, stone. Have you ever bought one from the Isle of Wight before that? No. Yeah, so maybe, maybe they're common over here, but I've yeah. never seen one. I've never seen If there was a pair, my God. Mm. But no, all the bits we bought, really happy. We're meeting people, we're out and about. It's not a bad place to be. I'm enjoying myself immensely. I packed an extra bit of sun from Wales in the back of the van. <laughs> so when we got here, I let a bit out for him. <laughs> it's an absolutely lovely place to be. I love it. I really enjoy it.
I like good. that. It's just the yeah. colour's good, isn't it? Yeah, I know, the colour is good. The colour's yeah. fab, isn't it? Sort yeah. of thing that my mum would love that. She'd really like that. She's got Christmas sorted. Christmas and birthday, that is. <laughs> tell you for that much money. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's literally nothing to do to it. You don't want to clean it, you don't do anything to it. You, know, you don't certainly don't want to paint it or strip the paint off. It's a great look. That low boy's lovely. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Again, lovely colour, original brass, just a really nice, honest piece. Yeah. Look how dainty the handles on it as yeah. well, aren't they? They really yeah. are. It always amazes me when this stuff survives. When you think, you know, that was 17, 10, 17, 20, somewhere around yes. there. Yes, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Just yeah. how on earth has that survived? What else have we got here? I do love these things as well. Yeah. I do love them. Is that wooden again? They're so yes, beautifully Ebony. carved, aren't they? Aren't they, for the money as well? Yeah. I mean, you can pick them up for peanuts. Yes, as well, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's a, that's a particularly nice one. Yeah. How much can he be? You've got £80 on there. Up uh, 65 65 I like the size of that one. I mean, mm. I know you it's get. It's a good the, example. He's yeah. got a good face, hasn't he? Yeah. He's got a good face. Yeah. Yeah, he's excellent. What do you reckon? Should we have him? Yeah, I like him. I'm surprised you took so long to get to him. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah, on. we'll have him, please. There was a thing down here that I looked at, which is something you hardly ever see. Oh, the clock box. Yeah. yeah. On the floor, there's something I recognise straight away, and it's a late 18th century oak clock box. And that's just the simple box that you would put your highly ornate, very expensive clock in. How many have survived? Hardly any. You know, they're one of those things that you very rarely see. I love the idea that that's all it was for. It's such a simple thing. During the late 18th century, clocks were still relatively new and very much a luxury item. So if you were traveling anywhere, you would take your highly ornate and